Welcome to GlassCon Global's 2020 virtual event. My name is Tim Nass, and I'm the Vice President of Sales for Safety First, manufacturers of fire-resistive glass framing and entrances. I'd like to welcome you to innovative design applications using advanced fire-rated glazing technology. This is an accredited program. We have three simple learning objectives, and while the title is a mouthful, we've tried to pare it down to make it easy to understand this often overlooked and misunderstood market segment. First learning objective is to define and differentiate the two product categories within our market segment, fire protective and fire resistive. Then we'll look at how the architectural community has impacted the advances that we've seen in fire resistive glass framing and entrances. We'll go over some case studies as examples. And then finally, we'll look at the importance of multifunctional fire resistive systems that include fire rated performance as well as security features. So to start, we'll just define the two product categories that reside within our very narrow market segment. Nomenclature is incredibly important because how we define a product will communicate a level of performance that is expected or anticipated by code. When we talk about the fire protective category, we're always referencing windows and doors, fixed or operable, any medium, wood, aluminum, steel, as long as it's fire rated. By code, it's referred to as a protected opening. Conversely, fire resistive products are always referenced as walls. Regardless of configuration, in spite of the fact that they are transparent, they are not openings by code. We'll go into this further in subsequent slides. So this is a general rule of thumb. Like any rule book, there are exceptions. The code is no different. So when we look at fire protective products, we define them by test standards NFPA 257 and 252 for windows and doors or openings, protected openings by code. General rule of thumb, these products are rated for 45 minutes or less, and they're required to compartmentalize the visual elements of a fire. Fire resistive products, or what we call wall products, are tested in accordance with ASTM E119, occasionally NFPA 251 or UL 263. These products are rated beyond 45 minutes, up to 120. They are required by code to compartmentalize the visual elements of a fire, smoke and flames, and stop the transfer of radiant heat or energy generated from a fire. This is the key distinguishing feature between protective and resistive. The resistive product's ability to control the transfer of radiant heat makes it a wall product, despite the fact that it is in fact transparent. So in order to make these products available in North America, we go through a series of tests. First one is in the fire endurance test. We put a frame in front of a furnace, put a piece of glass in that frame, we start a fire. The sole purpose of this test is to determine how long the glass will remain in the opening. It gets a corresponding duration rating. This is where we see a numeric value placed aside the product, 20 up to 180 minutes. The individual administering this test is wearing protective gear because this is fire protective glass. So the amount of energy that's radiating through this glass opening is significant. We can see temperatures at 976 degrees Celsius, which translates to about 1700 to 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. So very unstable environment. Again, we only wanna see how long the glass is gonna remain in the opening. So at the conclusion of this test, you can see the buck is actually pulled away from the furnace. This leads us to our next test standard, the host stream test. So now we have the test specimen at the surface of the glass and frame that had been exposed to extreme temperatures, 17, 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, now facing the center of the test facility, where we have a fire hose waiting at a predetermined distance, 20 feet, and a predetermined pressure, 30 PSI. Water is evenly distributed across the surface of the glass and framing, the time period of this test is determined by the size of the test specimen and the amount of clear view. So you can see water is evenly distributed across the surface of the glass and framing. There is allowable breakage, 30% at the perimeter, 5% center of glass. However, the glass is not allowed to leave the opening. There is a lot of debate about the purpose of this test. Many people think it's, to, it's designed to simulate a firefight, but I can assure you that fires are fought from uh, six to eight feet away, not 20 feet, and the pressure that's coming out of the fire hose is far in excess of 30 PSI that we see here. So it is not designed to replicate fires. Many people also think it's to enact or uh, 
initiate thermal shock. And while that certainly occurs because you have glass at 16, 1700 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and water that's at room temperature at best, thermal shock could happen, but that's not the purpose of the test. Again, we're doing a structural test to determine the structural integrity of the assembly. This is performed on any product rated over 20 minutes and it is only performed in North America, the United States and Canada. I only point that out because when you're evaluating products to be used in North America, it's important that they comply with the hose stream standard. So again, to look at the fire resistive products, they go through the endurance test. The key distinguishing feature is the ability to control or manage radiant heat flux. And then finally, the hose stream test to ensure the structural integrity of the entire assembly. As we move into our second learning objective, we're gonna look at the demand for large clear views, large expanse of glass, limiting the amount of intermediate framing members, optical clarity, and the unobstructed views, as well as thermal performance. So as recently as 2009, the largest piece of glass available in the fire resistive market segment was 4,952 square inches. Now, that's a big piece of glass, maximum dimension of 124 inches today, a mere 10 years later, we see products with 10,000 square inches of clear view, 125 by 80 in terms of uh, overall size. That's a significant piece of glass for any fenestration, let alone fire rated. We have products that have maximum dimensions up to 133 inches, and we see temperaturized doors up to and at 10 feet. We're gonna look at a couple of projects that employed large pieces of fire resistive glass and entrances to enhance the overall experience for the building occupant, as well as the safety of the overall building design. First project is 520 West 20th Street. This is a project located in Chelsea, lower west side of Manhattan. The idea here is that they were repurposing an existing four-story brick building, adding on an additional three stories that were comprised of steel and glass. The primary feature of this addition was the view of the New York skyline, including the Empire State Building. Morris Ajmi was the design architect on this project and their original design included three separate lights horizontally butt glazed in what would be a two hour fire resistive wall or transparent barrier. During conversations with the glazing subcontractors and trying to eliminate field labor, specifically going to the outside of the building, it was determined that this particular application could be accomplished in one piece of glass. So what you're looking at is a two hour fire resistive piece of glass and framing with a low E coating on the exterior to match the aesthetics of the rest of the building envelope. But that is a 133 by 60 inch piece of two hour glass and framing. So it accomplished what the architect really intended in their original vision, but didn't think that they could accomplish with existing fire rated products. So here they're able to leverage the fire rated assembly to enhance not only the aesthetic of their building, but its safety and code compliance overall. Another project of note would be the Starbucks Roastery on Chicago's Magnificent Mile. And a common theme that we're gonna see in the hospitality and service industry is an immersive experience. So Perkins and Will really wanted to enhance the building occupants experience as they matriculated through this Starbucks roastery and uh, had different experiences on each floor. They did that by encouraging the building occupants to use the stairwells in lieu of a elevator or lift. And they incorporated a four story mural by a local artist from Chicago. Uh, part of the enhancement to the stairwell enclosure was incorporating natural light. And by doing that, they leveraged a two hour fire resistive butt glazed assembly with a door. So here you see another two hour piece of glass over 10 feet tall, four feet wide, no intermediate vertical framing members, and a 10 foot door that eliminated the need for a transom. So again, leveraging fire rated uh, assemblies to enhance some of the aesthetic features of the building, and again, to enhance the building and the customer's experience as they work their way through uh, this unique structure and uh, facility from Starbucks. So we've seen examples of large expanse of light, large 
uh, pieces of glass without intermediate framing members. How else can we enhance optical clarity? Another example of this would be low iron. Now this is common on the non-rated glass and framing side, but it's relatively new to the fire resistive world. Uh, and a case study here would be the Klarman School of Business at Harvard. So this is a William Ron design. The application is a lobby space adjacent to an auditorium. Again, the architect wanting to incorporate natural light into this uh, large gathering space, uh, a transition from a public space to a more private space. It is the primary entrance and egress from the auditorium. You're seeing large expanse of glass, minimizing the amount of intermediate framing members, but also low iron glass. So again, closer look, we find that this assembly is actually splayed in plan. It is low iron glass, and those are doors that are uh, four foot by eight foot tall, so eight foot wide by eight foot tall overall, 90 minute doors, aluminum clad. Upon uh, closer inspection, we see that there is a custom hardware package incorporated, including Panix and an internal concealed vertical rod. All I want to drive home here is, you know, not only can you incorporate large clear views of glass, large doors, uh, minimal framing intermediates, but also the ability to splay in plan to have aluminum clad doors and a custom hardware package. You're not limited uh, to your options when you leverage these products in your overall design. So again, they're designed to enhance the safety as well as the building occupants uh, experience in your facility. So now we've talked about large clear views, we've talked about low iron glass, Let's talk about unobstructed views, direct line of sight. Again, on the hospitality uh, service industry, we see the desire to create an immersive experience for the visitor or the customer. So we're going to go through a couple of examples of this um, as we look at not only uh, the service industry, but uh, institutional as well as multifamily, uh, multifunctional uh, facilities. So the first is the Old Forester Distillery in Louisville, Kentucky, Bravura Architects. This uh, building actually experienced damage from a fire around 2015 in an adjacent structure. Uh, but again, the desire to create a working distillery that their customers can visit and watch and observe the process. Um, so they decided to incorporate a one hour fire resistive barrier uh, at the barreling area. So they char and barrel the uh, bourbon in this distillery, uh, one thing that you'll notice is again, tall lights of glass. So uh, the, the process is very visible, but also leveraging the ability to put signage or incorporate function into uh, the fire resistive assembly. So barrel filling in progress uh, could either be sandblasted onto the glass surface or simply a surface applied film that is applied to the glass. Doesn't impact the rating of the assembly and again, enhances the visitor's experience. Uh, this is an example of a open stairwell at a library at the University of Wisconsin. Uh, the architect again wanted very transparent stairwell enclosure, uh, the ability for the uh, students to move from one floor to the next based on uh, their needs or, or uh, studies. And they did so by incorporating a fire resistive assembly, 60 minute vertically butt glazed, again, eliminating any framing intermediates very clean look, one that you would often see uh, maybe in a conference room. Uh, so again, you notice the clear butt joint, the elimination of any for, uh, vertical intermediate framing members. And those do doors are uh, nine feet tall. And you can see very large doors, again, aluminum clad to blend in with the remainder of the building materials used throughout. As we look at the multifamily market segment, Porsche Design Tower in South Florida, this is actually an elevator enclosure. Building occupants can drive their car onto an 800 pound freight elevator that takes it directly up to their unit. So again, we're looking at a two hour segmented fire resistive curtain wall assembly uh, that would blend in with any non-rated product uh, that you would see on a high end facility such as this. Once the owner uh, arrives at their floor, the car is gently pushed off of the freight elevator where it resides on a slab, looking at just outside of their uh, unit. Again, because this is for car enthusiasts, specifically Porsche owners, uh, there was a desire to be able to see 
the car while it sits on its slab. Um, so you can imagine from this perspective, the unit owner has a view of the Atlantic Ocean as well as a view of their car and uh, the uh, elevator enclosure that shows their neighbors taking their cars up and to uh, or down from their units as well. So a very unique way to incorporate uh, fire resistive assemblies into a very unique and specialized uh, building. Um, thermal performance, uh, obviously because these products are designed to stop the transfer of radiant energy, uh, you can imagine that they're fairly robust and by nature have excellent thermal properties, but when you incorporate them with a high performance low E coating, uh, regardless of the supplier, uh, it only enhances it that much more. So we see very robust numbers on the U value, solar heat gain coefficient, you know, CRF values. So again, uh, these products perform very, very well. They're also available in CMAST, NFRC's online modeling tool. So anything that is, has been reviewed, tested, and listed in CMAS can be modeled. And this is very important when these products are incorporated on the building envelope. A good example of this would be the Aspen Art Museum, a project designed by renowned architect Chaguru Bon. Uh, again, these are partially interior as well as exterior stairwell and elevator enclosures. Again, a common theme that we've seen throughout is the fact that the architect wanted large expanse of glass, clear views of glass, minimizing uh, intermediate framing members as much as they could, and the use of low iron glass. So this product has all three. You can see we're spanning large heights. They've also incorporated a, a wood trellis or screen uh, using indigenous wood uh, from the region. Again, creating large uh, open light-filled spaces the idea here is that the building occupant could still experience the mountain vista on the outside and any passerby on the sidewalk would be able to see in. Uh, the designer wanted to create a very transparent uh, facility and again, a very transparent open environment. This project, because it had exterior applications, required dynamic thermal testing of the assembly as well as dynamic air water and structural. So anything that you can do to a non-rated assembly, you can do to a fire resistive product as well. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, what we see now in today's world, you know, there is a lot of security features that have to be incorporated into all products on the building envelope or on the inside of the building, depending on its purpose and occupancy. We see the rise of multifunctional products, fire rated first, but then incorporating some level of security based on the environment, whether it's man-made or natural. So we'll look at a couple of examples. The first is a hurricane impact project. This is the VA in Orlando, also known as VAMC. It is a two hour exterior fire resistive hurricane impact system. It's one of the first of its kind. It was also unitized in the manufacturer's facility and hoisted into place via crane by the glazing subcontractor. So this project was at the leading edge for a lot of reasons and a lot of different uh, categories uh, when it was installed in late 2012, early 2013. We look at fire rated and blast rated UFC uh, standards from the Department of Defense and anti-terrorism. So again, these are products that are fire resistive first and then incorporate additional security features. Uh, this is for an army hospital facility in Southwestern United States. Uh, that is a two hour exterior curtain wall assembly. You can see it's canted less than seven degrees, uh, but it is also a blast rated curtain wall assembly. So anchorage, transfer of load, all of those things had to be taken into account when designing uh, and incorporating this fire resistive assembly into place. Ballistic has become an unfortunate reality. Uh, we can now see assemblies, uh, both the glass and framing, uh, rated up to level eight for ballistic. Uh, and grades one through four for ASTM F1915. Plaquemines Parish Detention Center is a facility that was damaged by Hurricane Katrina. L.R. Kimball renovated the facility and made some significant upgrades. The idea here is that for both the staff as well as the building occupants, they incorporated secure assemblies to make this a safer and better experience for everyone involved. This is the control uh, area for uh, the guards and staff. 
One of the key notes here is that they use glass without any wire mesh films or laminates because they wanted to make sure that they could see through the glass um, unobstructed. So uh, the problem that they had found with the uh, original assembly wire glass was that the staff was focusing on the mesh instead of what was beyond. So uh, it created eyesight issues for some of the staff members. And you can see here again, uh, these are 45 minute assemblies that incorporate both uh, fire rated as well as security features uh, in the event that someone is passing through or spending some additional time in a confined space, they can incorporate those features into the fire rated assemblies. Decorative glazing, so on a happier note, incorporating uh, decorative art glass or other uh, features to enhance the uh, aesthetics of these assemblies. So the first is the Central Subway Union Square in San Francisco. This is a two hour exterior fire rated floor. The walkable surface incorporates art from local artisans. Uh, this again provides natural daylight into the station itself, a unique experience for anyone that's passing by or walking over this fire resistive assembly. Uh, the University of Mission Law School, uh, this is an atrium space or a courtyard that was enclosed, uh, joining the existing building to the new addition. If you look in the distance, you can see some Gothic head art glass with uh, lead caming. This is actually sandwiching around 120 minute fire resistive glass. So they were able to maintain the historic nature, uh, the unique nature of these Gothic head lead caming uh, decorative art glass units into the courtyard feature, which is now a main feature of this facility as it is a study location. So the limestone and the uh, decorative art glass actually sandwich or enclose the fire resistive glass. Again, a very creative way to utilize fire resistive assemblies into uh, a very unique historic application. So, you know, finally, as we look at, you know, the healthcare industry, privacy is a huge issue for the patient as well as the staff uh, maintaining their dignity and privacy uh, while they recover or are treated for an ailment. This is a unique example. Primarily, we would see enclosed blinds, integral blinds, but this was using actually switch light glass into a fire rated assembly. So the switch light glass was incorporated into the fire resistive glass and framing. And you can see uh, in, on the left, in clear mode, allows the staff to monitor the patient if there is a, a reason for them to have their privacy. A flip of the switch gives them immediate opacity and privacy. And from the inside, you can see an action on the left is a clear, the product is in clear mode, and then a flip of the switch, it immediately goes to opaque and they have their privacy. So again, very creative use of fire rated and switchable glass. Again, showing the flexibility and availability of these products to the architectural community, providing both form and function. We appreciate your time and attention. We know we threw a lot at you in a very short period of time, but we will be able to address any questions that you have. In the event that you need to contact us directly for additional information, feel free to call Safety First at 888-653-3333 or email us at info at safety. Com. Feel free to visit our website, www.safety.com. We appreciate your time and attention. Thank you.